uh, and compromisation might take place in the act of performance or in advance. That it's all kind of one thing. It's kind of if this seems a little incoherent, it's because I think it's very hard to talk about. Um, the terms composition and improvisation have been around for a long time, and we're real used to using them. Um, and I'm, I'm, I think we need some new thought, but it's, it's hard because the language doesn't support it. Um, so, to get at it, I think maybe better. I want to use an example. I want to use some sound and something that you can kind of hear and think about. Um, this is from a, a, a book I've been writing. It's just done. It'll be about another year. Uh, on one album. It's about Thelonious Monk and John Coltrane's live performance at Carnegie Hall. It was recorded in 1957 and released in 2005. Um, and I want to play some bits from their performance of a standard song. Uh, this was not written by Monk, so it's, it's uh, a Broadway song, uh, Sweet and Lovely. Um, and there are a number of formal structures to this piece that I think are worth thinking about. Um, in the ways that they may have arisen in advance of playing, but also in the ways that they arose in the act of playing, that the formal structures themselves were improvised or improvised. Uh, so the first of these, and the most obvious one, is the, the tune itself, the piece itself. Uh, which had a melody and chord changes. And mostly that existed before they played, but actually it didn't completely because the way this song works, uh, the opening eight bars are, or sorry, the opening six bars are harmonically ambiguous. It's not really clear where the chords are going. So Monk actually does a bunch of different things with them, and he seems to have been generating, in fact, the chord structure in the moment. Now, the last two bars of the first section uh, are very, very clear harmonically, and he, he never changes them. Those he's clearly drawing from the original composition. <laughs> Uh, the next thing that seems to be um, a formal structure that is worth thinking about is the number of choruses, or the number of times they play through the chord structure, and the order of the solos. I'm pretty certain that that was decided in advance, uh, partly because they don't play very many. It's quite, it's actually, it's, I guess it's six times through the changes, uh, and partly because of the way they play through them, which I'll get to in a minute, but, and also because of what Monk, his normal kind of process was at the time, uh, for a show like this, um, he would have worked this out in advance. Uh, then there's a thing that's very special to this performance, a formal structure that's only really in this performance, and that um, 
is partially something that was worked out in advance, but I think not altogether something that was worked out in advance. And that's that there's a move in it from a kind of single time rhythmic framework, dum tsak, dum tsak, it's about that fast, um, to a double time framework where actually the band speeds up the underlying tempo and plays everything twice as fast, twice as many times. So it's like that. Uh, and then all of these things come together, I think, to create a formal structure that is essentially a pattern of tension and release. Um, I want to play it, not the entire thing for you, it's about nine minutes, so I can't, but I want to play you some, some uh, selections from it to kind of hear how things happen and take place as it goes along. Um, first, I'll just give you a, a brief overview. Um, it starts with a short introduction. This monk so. Uh, then um, the band plays through the main, the head, the main melody one time. The band is the main melody. Uh, then Monk plays one solo chorus. Then John Coltrane plays uh, one solo chorus. At the slow speed. That could have been the end of the piece. Uh, the way Monk played things at the time, that could have been the end. They could have probably gone back and played one time through, or even not. But instead, uh, then here you get um, this move to the faster tempo and the double time. For again, yeah, John Coltrane solo, and then uh, after that, so I think it's three choruses. Um, the band finishes by playing that again in the slower tempo. Um, and I want to play you a couple of bits. I'll start at the beginning. So you can hear the introduction and the beginning, at least, of the head. Uh, 